All right, so if no one's saying it, I'm gonna say it. Influencers are too predictable. Okay, so if you've been living underneath a rock, I've just been seeing more and more influencers pop off in shorter amounts of time. And it's scary how viral success is just getting faster and faster. Now, if you don't believe me, let's just backtrack and I'm gonna quickly explain why I think influencers are too predictable. Because if I don't explain it, a lot of y'all are gonna attack me, okay? And that's not what this channel's about, okay? If you're new to my channel, my name's Jade. I talk a lot about marketing in combination with psychology and I haven't done this series in a while. All right, so to quickly break down why I think influencers are predictable, I'm gonna explain the story to give you a little context, so bear with me, okay? Grab a snack, grab a drink, it's about to get spicy. So last week I had a call with my friend Edward Zoe, and we we're just chatting about why we think Ava Max is low-key the clone of Lady Gaga. Okay, and I know it's an unpopular opinion, but come on guys, like just take a look. It's like the blonde hair, the music, the pop, the attitude, like we're just, we're just sitting here like this is literally a Gaga clone. And Lady Gaga, right, took years and years to build up to the credibility she has today. You know, she has a hit movie, hit songs, and it took her like 10 years to do so. However, Ava Max kind of popped off the charts in like a year or two. But obviously there's like a lot of hard work underneath that we're not seeing. But that first conversation of Ava Max and Lady Gaga, who are both singers that make similar type of music and aesthetic, which got me thinking how often is the industry learning from this and literally making little clones? And this is called the clone effect. I'm not gonna lie, I made this up out of my ass, but I really think it's a real thing. And if you don't believe me, get this other example, okay? So Emma Chamberlain, right? She's a YouTube star in the span of six months, she was able to rise to a million subscribers last year. And that is insane. And she's doing amazing things with Vogue, Cosmopolitan, and even Louis Vuitton. So you don't need me to sit here and tell you how amazing and successful Emma Chamberlain is to realize that we have another player in town, okay? So Charlie D'Amelio is a TikTok star that has now literally almost surpassed Emma's records, right? So on TikTok, Charlie reached 10 million followers in two months. Bro, what? I'm telling you, okay? Emma and Charlie, although they don't make any similar content, they're still that relatable teen figure that relates to a young audience. And I don't know what to say other than the what the shit, okay? It keeps getting faster. You know, Emma took six months, Charlie took two months. I swear to God, the next Charlie the Schmelio will come out in a week. And this got me thinking, like, I feel like more and more people are catching on to trends. And it's a matter of fact of how fast can you spit it out and how fast can you spit it out at the rate of your competitors. So this leaves me to our main conversation, which is what is the clone effect and how are brands leveraging it to literally replicate viral success faster and faster? So the road to viral success is obviously becoming way more predictable. And the scary thing is it's coming faster and faster. So today I'm gonna explain the influencer clone cycle so you guys can understand what it really takes to repeat success over and over again, faster than the last time. If you guys wanna know more, all you gotta do is keep on watching. All right, so honestly, I'm gonna jump in today's video. There's four main stages, okay? One is called the protective hype. Second stage is joining forces. Third is get in a scandal. And fourth is survive or die. Now, I know you're wondering like, what the heck are these phases, Jade? You definitely made it out of your ass. And I definitely did. All of this is bullshit. And I made this up, but to give you the real context of why I think influencers are so predictable. So if you're following along, I actually created a article on Vocal. So if you wanna read the full article I typed out with my team, you can read it right here. And and you guys can check it out. This video is actually sponsored by Vocal and I have a quick message for you guys so we can jump right in. Vocal is a platform that provides storytelling tools and communities for creators. You can actually earn money on Vocal and I'll show you how it's done. So Vocal has these communities and you're able to post stories and articles in there and then you can actually earn money by every reader that you get. I actually wrote three articles on Vocal and you guys can check it out. I'm actually in their business category called journal because I love talking about social media but they actually have over 34 other categories you can choose from. So like if you're like a beauty influencer, you can go to blush or if you're like into travel vlogging, you can go post and wander. So this helps you find your community. And as a creator, I love this idea. Check out Vocal if you haven't already. And thank you for sponsoring today's video. All right, let's get back into it. All right, so phase number one, the protective hype. So when it comes to viral success, I noticed that every single influencer starting out goes through this phase, which is for me, the ability to be kind of low key and the secret of the internet. 
So get this, at the start of a creator's career, when you stumble upon someone new on YouTube or TikTok, you almost want to keep them a secret. Why? It's because like when you find a creator you like, it's kind of like finding a best friend and you don't want to share your best friend. I kid you not, there's so many times in high school where I had jealousy issues. Like I didn't want to share Cassandra with Bethany. Like Cassandra is my friend. If someone gets too big and famous and they have way more friends, they're going to forget about you, which is why I think the protective hype is such like predictable stage in everyone's career, right? If you're noticing comments on a creator's page where it's like, I hope to keep them a secret or this is so precious. Like this is like my favorite thing ever, but I don't want people to know. Like, you know, they're at the start of this clone cycle, which is kind of a phenomenon when fans are protective over their creators. I kid you not, in Emma Chamberlain's comments back in 2018, there were a ton of people saying, I want to preserve Emma or keep her the same and like put her in a box essentially. And the protective hype is like, you still want to root them on and have success for them, but you don't also want them to get too big. So basically phase one is the fans are doing whatever it takes to keep the creator in its place. However, if you do not understand the YouTube or TikTok algorithm, they're here to make freaking money. So whether you like it or not, the algorithm's automatically going to push this content to more pages and more people. So they're going to have a larger audience without you being able to be in control. So without doing anything, you're going to move on to phase number two and watch your favorite creator go into joining forces. I could be totally making this up, but I'm pretty sure I remember when I was in high school, like we learned that when humans were first evolving, we had like this, you know, like tribe mentality where if you were not in a tribe, you're going to get killed. And that's the exact same thing with influencer marketing. Like I feel like once you have any success alone on your channel or you pop off, you almost have to migrate to like a team 10 house. Like if you are alone, you're going to isolate yourself from getting more views and growth because you're basically cutting yourself off from what's currently trending. And I don't at all agree with this, but you're going to see your favorite creator start joining hype houses or team 10, you know, they're going to collab more. And the key with that is like, if you're joining forces with another big creator, you're going to share that audience and grow double the size. And the algorithm loves that. So it's almost pressured upon you to do that. <laughs> I have not breathed at all throughout this video. Make sure you give this video a like if you're so far enjoying it because I'm getting super excited. So the perfect example after you reach phase one is to join a larger group, collab with more creators so you can keep growing because it's better with a team. And I get the tribe mentality, but also I think it's a little bit formulaic and too predictable. Like at this point, if someone's popping off, you're just going to expect them to join some sort of like house, right? Same with Emma Chamberlain. She joined a group of dote creators. You're going to start seeing people have this herd mentality just to keep their relevance. And it's kind of weird and low-key dehumanized humanizing because it's like this really straightforward step by step format to success. Like the reason why I'm making this video is not to like just tell you guys a little entertaining little fun fact, but it's really just to like show you guys that like, wait a second, like this shit is so predictable. And in the moment, I feel like we can look at these like team 10 houses or, you know, group trips as like such a thing we want. But in reality, it's just so formulaic that I bet these creators don't really feel a sense of family or community that they portray on camera. And I just hope this video kind of shows that this is so formulaic. All of this is just consistent with, you know, Emma, team 10, like, everything I believe is, is getting to this point and I haven't seen anything new in a while. So let me know if you guys agree with this or don't before I move to number three, which is what I call getting in a scandal. So phase three for me is just all about like, once you get a level of success, some people will feel strongly about you for good or for worst. And for the people that feel bad about you, they're going to be jealous and mad. And they're just going to try to find anything to pick you and just tear you down. And I don't mean to encourage this, but it's really sad because this is happening to so many people. I don't want to talk about it too much, but like I I've just seen my friends go through drama and scandal for things they didn't mean to do or harm the internet. Like a lot of people don't have these bad attentions, but because of the internet, you know, anyone can get criticized. And I don't know, I've seen it really harm my close friends, but I've also seen it happen with every single creator. Like I'm pretty sure Charlie D'Amelio's nudes got leaked or people saw her vaping. And at this point, it's just really childish and immature. And honestly, again, predictable because at this point, like no matter what you do, you're going to get criticized. And I really don't agree with that. Like the number one reason why I think cancel culture is just so popular is because if you use someone's name in a video, you're going to get views. And whether for good or for worse, there's going to be people that are just wanting to use your name for a video for their own clout. Because again, they don't want you to succeed. They want it for themselves. And you know, that's, you know, facts. I make videos here commenting about like the internet. I just don't know if the right way is to be a negative impact, but that is not for me to decide. <laughs> All right. So if you watch your favorite creator go to phase three, you've seen them go through a scandal, then you're going to see them go to stage four, which is survive 
survive or die. I believe the number one way you can like differentiate someone who's successful and here for the long run versus someone who's a fad and not going to really, you know, create a successful profile is someone who just takes this negative feedback and lets it crush them. Like I believe Charlie D'Amelio is actually not getting enough credit for what she did. She definitely got a lot of hate for her growth, which she didn't mean to, and she keeps making content. And I think that's really dope because I don't know about you, but like imagine going through your phone and all your comments are talking bad about you to persevere and really persist it takes a lot of courage and honestly props to her. So what I really want to say is stage four for me is the pivotal moment where it really makes a creator a creator, right? If they're really in it for the views and attention, do you really think they're going to keep going with the hate and negativity, right? Like I feel like this is the moment where we can see what is a creator's true intentions. When you receive criticism, I believe you have two options. You could either let it kill you or let it fuel you and keep going. And I know it's super hard to say, but these cycles are really just applicable to even your daily life, right? When you get a certain level of success or you get a really awesome opportunity, a lot of your friends are going to bring you down and try to make you feel like you've done something wrong. And whether you're on a tea channel for getting in a scandal or you're getting in a fight with your group of friends, I believe that negativity can be crippling you or you can allow it to flourish and, and persevere and keep going. Let's just be honest, like life is just not easy. And I wanted to just encourage you for anyone going through rough times or criticism, like everything's going to be okay. This is something that's normal and happens to everybody. And although I love making jokes about this like, clone influencer cycle, this cycle is applicable to your life. And I hope you guys can learn something from this, which is this is totally normal. It's a part of doing something outrageous and trying to be successful. You're going to receive criticism. You're going to receive hate. But the people that really stand out are the people that keep going. So I hope this inspires you to just persevere through the hard times. All right, guys. So thank you for watching today's video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. And if you guys would like, text my phone number. I'm here to reply to your comments and questions. So with that, shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you want to be the next comment winner, all you got to do is just text me or comment. Literally tell me anything your heart desires and let me know if you agree with today's video. I love your guys' feedback and I am having a meetup in Los Angeles. So if you want to know more about social media growth, my companies I'm running, you know what? Come meet me and I love to say hello. So yeah, I'll put the link in the description box for anything I mentioned today and make sure you guys check out my article on Vocal. I've been writing some stuff there and I'm really passionate about it. So yeah, just read some more content in the description box below. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.